hey everyone. You might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So... If you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Nintendo Pride Podcast, episode 41, and... I like to say, as always, what you were missing last I week. I was, I was. I'm sorry. I do apologize for that. Wasn't feeling the greatest. Technically, wasn't feeling the greatest the day we wanted to record this too. But hey, yeah, right. You look a lot better. I feel a lot better. So, so sleep will do for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, 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 so, I didn't even really get any of that because I've been hunting. So, well, you know. Yeah. Well, you get? Do you get anything? No. Oh. You got to see something to get something. <laughs> Out. Well, I got back. That's about it. Oh, well, you know that happens. Yeah. Um. So we're going to kind of keep this a shorter podcast this week. Obviously, we had the three-hour marathon with me and 5J last week. It's just Eric and I this week. Uh, we're recording this literally holiday week. So Thanksgiving, blah, 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 blah. Family time, all that stuff. So hope you can forgive us for a shorter podcast. Uh, but you know what? I think we have some good stuff to talk about. Yeah, shorter doesn't necessarily mean worse. No, so, no. Uh, so an ongoing theme in this podcast this year seems to be street dates and game leaks. Oh boy! Um, and our first topic here, we're dealing with Xenoblade Two, which comes out on December first. So at the you, it, it's after you hear this podcast, but shortly after because it literally releases the week this podcast comes out. I think Thursday or Friday, um, and. Xenoblade 2 was apparently had has reportedly and there's been pictures taken as evidence that the street date of it was broken in the Middle East, specifically in Saudi Arabia, over a week before the game <sighs> was supposed to come out. Wow. Um, so we obviously know that this has been an ongoing issue. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy who was streaming Mario Odyssey in China supposedly got one from a play, another country in Europe that broke the street date. Um, we know that Pokemon Ultra Moon was leaked. Pokemon Moon was also leaked last year. Mm-hmm. Um, some other stuff. And some of those leaks came from the media, so it's not entirely on street dates. Um, and Nintendo responded to the street dates in Europe um, by basically saying we're not going to release games to the retailers until like almost like when it releases, which means some retailers are not going to have the game on the release date. Mm-hmm. Um, so... That's how they responded in Europe. There hasn't been any issues with this in the U.S. yet. That doesn't mean that there aren't street dates broken in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't happened with Nintendo games in a while. Um, The issue in the U.S. seems to be more media leaking games than it seems to be like retailers leaking games. So this has has no effect on... At least that we know of. If you want Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in the U.S., like day one, you're not going to have to worry about it. You're getting it day one, no matter where you order it from. Um, unless there's obviously unforeseen shipping issues if you order online. Right. Um, so what should Nintendo do about this? Because this keeps happening. I, I don't know if there's really anything you can do about it. I mean, the only thing you could really possibly do is if you know what store did it, you, you just don't ship them any. Well, and I think the hard thing is they don't really know what store. Right did it because it's not like they scan each individual game and know which stores the games were sent to. Mm-hmm. Um, they could track, you know, shipping of boxes, but you don't, you don't get in a box and people are dumb enough to like, Oh, let me take a picture of the receipt on where it was from, which right. store. Right. So let's get them busted. Um, right. and obviously this is in the, in the middle East The the, I guess you could say the the nice thing about it is obviously Nintendo's new European policy worked. Because this didn't have the street, at least so far as the time of recording, street date has not been broken anywhere in Europe for this game. Right. Uh, which was their response to the street date being broken for Mario Odyssey. So, 
I mean, it's one of those things where I wonder if that policy is something they're just going to have to do worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um, even before just anticipating it happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sucks because if you think about it, as I just got done saying, it doesn't seem to be happening in the United States. That doesn't mean it can't happen. Right. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen and that the people that buy it early are just not stupid enough to post about it. Right. And, and like I said, it, it's, it's, it could be broken. It's, we just don't know about it. Yeah. So what sucks about the street day being broken is one, like everything about the games out there now. Um, Cause that's just what happens. Street Day's broken. Multiple people buy the game. They talk about it online. They, they release yep. videos. Well, I mean, this is this is why the Street Day being broken sucks. Uh, it's not so much that it sucks for the consumer who bought the game. Obviously, you get to play oh, the right, game early right, for sure. Uh, but it sucks for people who uh, don't want literally everything about the game out there before it's time to buy it. Before day one, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is even before like review embargoes went up and everything. So like this is even before media are able to cover it. Right. Um, that's I mean that's a huge chunk of time a week. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And this is a JRPG, so like right. a week you can sink you know hundred hours in there. Oh if That's yeah. all they're playing for. Right. Um, it's uh, it, it's tough because I feel like you know you could talk about how maybe this isn't newsworthy because game leaks and street dates have been broken for pretty much my entire life. Yeah. Um. But I feel like it's newsworthy in that we know Nintendo is now actively trying to stop it Mm -hmm. because they're tired of it. Right. Uh, And I think a lot of Nintendo fans are getting tired of it, too. But again, I don't outside of tracking where, you know, basically having something that you can track where the shipments are going and somehow track like a piece of code that once the game's loaded up, it says, hey, this this code has been registered as this code has been played and you know where you sent that that uh cartridge to mm-hmm. and then you just basically punish the store by I mean the, the only problem is is that it also sucks for the people that are buying from that store but you basically say well tough squats you don't get yeah you don't get the new and, games for and the stores that usually leak it we're talking more about independent stores um, the big chain stores, they don't do that because they don't want to risk losing business from a big company. Right. But like mom and pop shops that kind of rely on just getting people in the door, they're usually the ones that are like, hey, look, we'll break street date. Because uh, I talked about this in a prior video. The margins that retailers make on new video games are razor thin. Yeah. So like they're not breaking street date to make more money off that game than other people. Mm-hmm. What they want are people in the door hopefully buying other stuff right so breaking street date allows people to, or entices people to come in mm-hmm. get the game early there and possibly oh hey thanks for giving the game early oh you have this game and this game and this game right you buy all these used right. games and extra peripherals and suddenly that's where they make all their money right it's kind of like the gas station effect mm-hmm. uh, you know oh, ga- sure. gas you know they make like two to three cents per gallon uh so they really don't make much off the actual gas it's mm-hmm. when people come in the store and buy things um, which is why you see stores like it, around here. We have Quick Trips. Quick Trips have, have really stepped up their game the last ten years and become an, almost a full convenience store. Yeah. Because one, there's some areas where it, there is no other convenience store. Oh, right. Uh, and two, it's it it's just convenient. Yep. Right. Um, oh, a lot sure. of gas stations have started to do that. A lot. Mm-hmm. I've even noticed uh, some other ones, some holidays out there and stuff like remodeling themselves to become basically a mini grocery store. Yeah. Oh, um, for sure. Which is, is nice. Uh, especially when I just need to pick up one thing and I'm already filling up gas. Mm-hmm. Um, and their prices aren't usually that bad, especially better than Gordy's. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Doesn't well, take much. No. Go- no. The Gordy's grocery store chain around here, um, they overcharge compared to like everyone well, else. Not for very much longer. So, <laughs> Well, I think they were bought out. Huh? Well, that, that hasn't the, the happened sh- yet. The Schaefer's and... That hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened no, yet? No, the, the auction hasn't gone through yet, so... Oh, well, because there's a lot of Our Family products in all the stores now. Yeah. And Our Family ba- bags are what you get when you... Yeah. So I, I'm i thinking there must be some sort of partnership with Our Family. Yeah, that, that was the, that the was bio. their... That was their... Uh, no, that was their uh, generic brand. Okay. Was Our Family. Okay. But... Well, I don't know. The stores are being fully restocked now. So something's happened. Well, they're taking stock from the other stores and putting it... Anyways, back to... Th- 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 this is a whole other discussion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Oh, I go through Side track. But yeah, it, I don't know what to do about... Yeah, it, I don't... The thing is, I don't want to punish customers that, right. that go... 
it's how how can the only way I can really see them doing something besides um, punishing all stores is being like, look, we're just not going to give products to independent stores, right? But then that I mean, is, is that really what people want? Do they want to hurt those smaller mom and pop shops and well, be like, sorry, you can't it, have new products? It would it would have to be the ones that, like I said, you'd have to find a way to track it, and then. But I don't know how you could. You know, I mean, you can if the customer themselves that bought it gives out more information, but... No, uh, yeah, you could do it. How? I, when when, when all a customer sure. does is show, like oh, I look, said, here's the new game, and they show you the front of the box. All the front of the boxes look the same. There's nothing unique. No, no, I it. know. But if... That's saying that they don't plug it in and play it. Well, here's Like the, I said, like you could probably put something but, but in how, the code. But how that, can Nintendo know if that person's a media member or not? Because they know what... Sh- copies they send out to media maybe but they don't know what they're playing it on they don't know who who switches a media outlet who switches in a media outlet it would be a code within the game so it's a drm yes and no because the only way you could check that is to have a drm you'd have to have the code auto check online all the time just the first time But what about what if people just don't connect their switches online? Then I guess you'd never know. But somebody, the chances of everybody that has a leaked game or like a, a broken street date not know, connecting well, to an well, internet. Yeah, but I mean, what do you do? Do you punish the customer who bought the game early? No, you'd have to punish because, the store. But, but even if you figure out the code, you would, you're telling that Nintendo now has to track every individual game cartridge to every store. This we sent out two million copies of Super Mario Odyssey day one. We have to know where literally every little cartridge went instead of just doing the the boxing like they do now and just tracking the box shipments. Yeah, I mean it just sounds like a lot. I mean I'm not saying that they they can't do it. I'm just mm-hmm. saying that that sounds like a lot of overhead just to stop an issue that isn't technically hurting Nintendo in in the. It's not really hurting the sales of the games. It's right, not. It's right. different than a leaked game online that people right. are emulating. Oh no, for sure. Um, it's just r- ruins the PR cycle of the game. It's oh, basically no, for just sure. something that upsets yeah. fans. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if people got leaked games or got or not leaked games, like early copies of games, and they just wouldn't put all this information on the internet, mm-hmm. then you know it wouldn't matter. But of course right. they're going to because they want attention. Right. Um, and I can't blame them. But like I said, if these people. They're going to put the information on the internet, which means that they probably connected their switch to the internet. So the problem's the internet. internet. Yes. <laughs> but Shut it, down the it internet. It actually doesn't mean that they connected their switch to the internet. You can yeah. just turn off Wi-Fi and, and record it through a capture card like I do. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. You'd have to do something. I don't know what it would be. Because one, one fan suggested in the past that, oh, they should just run full DRM services on all their no. games. And I'm like, you no. can't. No. You, that ends up hurt. Okay. Uh, I, I can understand why you might think they should do that. Um, he didn't call it a DRM service, but the way he described it was basically it was DRM. And I'm like, you can't run DRM on a console. The, the DRM, to put this in perspective, there are certain PC games that use DRM. And the problem, I mean, the DRM exists basically to stop people from hacking their games, leaking them for free, and people playing them. Because you don't have to emulate on a PC. You just get the game and you play it. You just have to have a CD right. key or a crack. Right. Um, so to combat that, they, they have all these different DRMs that they put on the games. Mm-hmm. Not all not all PC games do this, but like a, Ubisoft takes advantage of that a lot. And the problem is, is the DRM ends up hurting the legit consumers a ton because what happens when the server's offline? What happens when right. you can't connect to the internet, but you're not even playing an internet game? Yeah. You know, all these different situations, or you get a bleep in your internet because, you know, as much as we have constant connection to the internet, there's always right. little blips and bleeps. You might not even notice yeah. it. Like, I'll, I'll be on my computer doing stuff, and I might not even notice my internet went off for a half second. Right. Oh, no. But sure. when you're in a game that's using nonstop, constant online DRM, that little blip disconnects you. You get booted out of your game. You didn't get a save in there. You're screwed. Yeah. Um, and it's been a big... That, that's what, what sucks about DRM is it hurts real consumers so much that it's not worth implementing it um, just to prevent like early release of games. Um, it, it's a tough situation. I'm glad Nintendo's trying to do something about it just as a consumer. Like I don't mm-hmm. get review copies of games yet. Maybe I will someday, but I don't now. So 
it just I, I'm a general consumer like the rest of you. I don't want all this stuff out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm someone right. that reports on all this stuff. Yeah. But like, and you're the ones that you're somebody that actually doesn't mind leak or no, like mind I, I, I don't I normally spoilers. Like, I, mean, I don't leaks. mind spoilers, spoilers and all that stuff. But it's just. Like when Mario Odyssey had all the spoilers out there, I actively avoided. You know, I right. talked. Oh, about, yeah, for sure. I talked about one little leak on 4chan, and then I left it at that. I didn't because I, I'm like, okay, all this other stuff I'm reading about is just too much info. Mm-hmm. Like I can't. I, I I could get a ton of views oh, reporting yeah. on this, but I don't want to right. because I'm that means I'm openly supporting oh, yeah, early sure. release copies of games yep. and and you know potentially you know leaked games or hacked games, mm-hmm. and it's like. I don't know. It, it, it's a tough situation that Nintendo finds themselves in. Um, you know, not every company is trying to trying to combat it. Some don't care. Right. Um, I mean, at least Nintendo cares. Uh, yeah. It, it. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing, yeah, like you said, is just to give it to them. Yeah. I mean, the like only thing I can say, like, day beforehand. Like, 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 say this. Say they don't want to implement that street date thing in the Middle East. You know, releasing the giving the game to the retailers closer to street date. Um, you. <laughs> The other alternative, and no one's going to like hearing this one either, is that since they have it locked down in Europe, Europe gets it first, then the surrounding countries get it like a week later. Mm-hmm. So then if, oh no, a, a place breaks street date, it's mm-hmm. not a big deal because the game's already out everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, people are going to hate that because that hurts people buying legit copies of the game. Yeah, you know Why should you in Saudi Arabia have to wait mm-hmm. because you bought a legit copy because some stores can't just not release right games early that's it sucks um it's one of those things that it's just so hard and, to and i always say like that. if you want to help nintendo out because they aren't going after individual stores probably because they just don't have a reliable way to track it i'm guessing is if you see a store that has a copy of the game and i mean just because it's on the shelf doesn't mean they're selling it by the way right right they, right. they might put it on the shelf but that doesn't mean yeah, the, the cases might be on the shelf to just yeah. display. Yeah. I mean, heck, they might even have the games on the shelf, but that doesn't mean they're selling it yet. Right. That's when you just go up and ask. But if you can buy it, and they, yeah. like, I would literally buy the copy there. They can buy it. You can always return it. Just don't open it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, walk out the store and go home and send an email off to, to your local Nintendo and be like, look, I just got this copy of this game from the store. And it's here's a picture of my receipt. Here's, yeah. here's this. Give, this give is... Nintendo the info, and they will blackball those retailers. Oh, yeah. And it sucks if it's a retailer you love, but it's it. they're breaking the law, technically. Yes. They're just not being caught. And yes. they know that the punishment for it is very minimal. Nintendo's not going to sue them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're well, just punishing all well. retailers in Europe. So Yeah. Um, and th- what, what it really affects, you know, what they're doing in Europe is the online retailers. Because the online retailers have to ship it to your house. Mm -hmm. So like Amazon, like in the US, Amazon will sometimes ship it four days early to ensure it gets to your house. So you might get the game a day early. Right. But the goal is to have it to you on launch day. They'd rather you have it a day early than have it a day late. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when a lot of these games launch on like Fridays, you might not want to pay for that Saturday shipping. Right. Um, But yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just a sticky situation. You guys let me know. Uh, what you think Nintendo should do about this, uh, or if you just don't think they shouldn't do anything? There's plenty of people I know out there that don't really think this is a big deal. Um, it isn't. It isn't. I mean, it, it's not because it's different than like Ultra Sun and Moon leaking or uh, Banner Saga, uh, the Miles, uh, uh, Mario and Luigi Bowser Saga, yeah. whatever thing. Yep. Banner Saga. I don't even remember what it's called. Right. That leak that caused Nintendo to do all this stuff in Europe. Um, like, those are 3DS games. There's 3DS emulators out there leaking. People are playing it illegally. Um, that's uh, obviously a lot worse than than this. I'm not trying to quantify, like, that's this okay, is the same yeah, level as yeah, that. Right. But but it's still... It still technically... It still sucks. Wrong. Yeah, it, it, it sucks. Because, it, again, I, I can't even get mad at the people who do get their hands on it early. Because it's like... I. If I, I'd probably do the same thing. Mm-hmm. If I, if I, if I walked into my GameStop and, oh man, they they have Xenoblade Chronicles two on the shelf today, oh Black Friday for well, sale. Yeah. I'm, why wouldn't I buy it now? Right. Exactly. I know I can live stream it and, I, and I'm not under any NDA restriction because right. I didn't sign anything. Right. So I could just do I can make a whole bunch of content for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would do that, but. You know, I'm also perpetuating the fact that it's okay to release games early. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's also a personal conundrum. Like morally, I probably shouldn't do that, mm-hmm. but it's hard for me to resist because I'm like, I want that game. 
Right. I want to know. No, for sure. So why wouldn't I buy it now when I have the money? And the game's there. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's move on to our next topic. Since there's no really answer to this one, it's just yeah. tell us what you think. Right, exactly. Um, so something interesting happened on the Nintendo Japanese website. Uh, in their Nintendo Direct section, they did what seems to always happen before they're about to announce a Direct is a, a spot opened up. So they bumped off one of their uh, old, like their oldest video you could watch and a new spot opened up at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and that usually indicates there's a Nintendo Direct coming. Yes, people track these things to find out when the Nintendo Directs are coming, and it's been like oh 100% gosh. correct every single time. Now, it does not mean... Uh, it used to mean that Nintendo Directs were coming like within a week or two, but the last few times, it, it's been like a month or so later. Hmm. Um, so it could just be Nintendo just changed things up. And Nintendo has, toes. has a history now of having a Nintendo Direct land in January because uh, they have the Game Awards that they usually present something at. That, that's December 7th. It's coming up fast, guys. Uh, and then, yeah, and then January, they usually have a big direct, and that kind of is everything that's coming out before E3. Um, so the question is, what are they going to show off? I mean, the, the, there's going to be a new Nintendo Direct eventually anyways. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, our best guess is January. Now we have evidence that, okay, this just happened on the Japanese website. Mm-hmm. We got a month and a half or so. Mm-hmm. So... How about let's go? What do you want to see at this Thunder Direct? Because this is like the this would be like kicking off twenty eighteen. We're done with the Odyssey and Zelda and all that hype. It'd be interesting to see some kind of concepts for Pokemon. Okay. Just kind of like what they're thinking. May it, you know it may not be like gameplay. actual gameplay, yeah. but hey, this is kind of what we're thinking. Like this and this and this. That'd be kind of cool to see. Yeah. Kind of, maybe some concept art or. Something. Especially if they Nintendo's really pushing that 2018 date. Right. Because we talked in the past how on their financial report it says 2018 or later. Right. Versus like Metroid Prime 4 that says TBD. Mm-hmm. Um, or TBA. I yeah. Can't yeah. remember which one it was. It'd be interesting to, to see maybe something from Metroid. I mean. It would be. Again, that's that was actually something I was thinking of before you I mean, brought that up. But I mean, let's get this out of the way. We're going to see more Yoshi. We're going to see more right, Kirby. Right. Those are two games yep. we know for sure. We've already seen a bunch of gameplay for. Mm-hmm. They're going to be coming out in the first half of next year. So we're going to see more of those. Um, man. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what new. I mean, because they can't blow their entire load at this one. Right. Because they have E3 still. Oh, for sure. I mean, they're probably going to announce maybe one or two new games. I'm guessing. I, I don't know. I mean, if I think about it, Fire Emblem is supposed to come out next year, like mm-hmm. a legit full version of Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen it yet. No. So no. if it's coming out next year, it feels like January is a good time to show it. Uh, obviously, like you said, Metroid and Pokemon. Um, I keep thinking that the January Direct might underwhelm in terms of game announcements. Okay. Uh, yeah. For Nintendo stuff. Right. They could announce a bunch of indies. Well, they're going to announce a bunch of indies. They always right. do. And they're going to announce probably some new third-party games, which mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping they announce more. You know, maybe we get a release date finally for Wolfenstein 2. Um, and hopefully that's not like the only major third-party game coming early next right. year. Hopefully there's more and they can announce that there. Um, but I feel like, you know, if you look at, if they show a Pokemon, Metroid, Fire Emblem, um, Kirby, Yoshi, mm-hmm. uh I'm trying to even think. I know there's a couple other Nintendo. I mean, they show off more of the No More Heroes there, Travis Touchdown game. I just say, is there any more new 3DS games coming out that we haven't... <sighs> is it dying? <laughs> is it finally dying? The major 3DS games, no. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, Capcom and Ace Attorney stuff, so we could see the new Ace Attorney game. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like... That like Nintendo's got five really big games that they can already show off that are announced, you know, mm-hmm. already announced anyways, even if they're not right. 2018. Right. Whereas I feel like new games, it would be like, okay, we're going to announce new games at E3. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like if they're going to announce one new game, it has to be something big. Mm-hmm. Like Smash. Right. That's like one of the biggest games they still... It's funny. We're less than a year in and I'm like, well, how many big games do they really have left they can release? Smash, Pokemon, Animal Crossing. Yeah, right. Fire yeah. Emblem. Right. Metroid. Yeah. You never know. We, they, already know they, most they of, we already know that most of the games have already been announced. <laughs> Did they actually announce a Animal Crossing? No, they have not okay. announced Animal Crossing. So There's that's, a rumor. I mean, that that's, coming, but. I mean, if you follow the pattern, Pokemon Go announced a Pokemon game. Mario Run announced Mario Odyssey, game. Yeah. 
we got Animal Crossing. Fire Emblem Heroes. They did yep, announce yep, Fire yep, Emblem yep. for next year. Yep. We just didn't see it. Right. And um, then you got the new Animal Crossing mobile. Yeah. And, and I then, guarantee... Well, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't guarantee it, but since the Animal Crossing mobile game, which we're going to be talking about next, right. um, is you're on a, a camping adventure, mm-hmm. so you're like away from your... I'm wondering if it's going to work intermingle with your yeah, main it, game. It won't surprise me. Where you have your main town, and then you... You know, you go on camping trips when you're all, when you're not at home, right? Even though yes, your switch is portable, blah 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 blah. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I think that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, an Animal Crossing would be a big announcement too, just because Animal Crossing sells a lot. I, yeah. I don't know how many people realize how popular Animal Crossing is. Right. It, it, it's a pretty big franchise. It's like people talk about how Metroid. Uh, someone told me that Metroid is one of Nintendo's most important IPs. Sure, if you want to talk about important in terms of having like a more realistic looking game, mm-hmm. um, in terms of the Prime series, Nintendo having an FPS game, uh, in terms of having a female protagonist, well, right? Sure, and, and, and in, ter- in terms of like popularity and mattering in the sales charts, Metroid just doesn't matter. But Samus is also one of a more recognizable character, sure. So that's sure. also iconic, that's, uh, yeah, iconic, yeah. Um, but it's it's also one of those, it's just not popular. Well, right. It's a, I hate yeah, saying it's that. A, it's I a niche love game. Metroid, yeah. guys. It's in a niche genre. It's always been in a niche genre. It helped create that genre. And it, it's just like Castlevania. It doesn't sell oodles, millions upon millions upon millions of copies. Animal Crossing does. Mm-hmm. Animal Crossing is almost as big as Pokemon in terms of per game sales. Now, Pokemon, I know, just crossed 300 million. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon had a nice launch. I know I didn't report on it, but I, it's because I'm like, well, Pokemon always is a nice launch. What am I talking about? <laughs> that's like the, that's like a five-second video. Pokemon had a great launch. Yeah. And oh, Pokemon <laughs> sold 1.5 million in Japan in the first three days. Uh, it, of course it did. Yeah, right. And it's on 3DS that has 70 million units. Now it does that on Switch right now with only right. 7 million units out there. Now we got something to talk about. Right. Even then, that's less than Mario Odyssey. So now we say, what's going to sell better, Odyssey or Pokemon? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But, <laughs> no, it's... I'm not worried about the sales of Pokemon. I mean, it yeah, is a right. cool milestone. Yeah. Uh, I think they said there have been 76 total Pokemon games. This includes all the spinoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, and 300 million total in sales. So, wow. I mean, yeah, you look at that as, you know, because you're like, oh, well, the Pokemon games sell like 14 million. I'm like, yeah, but a lot of the spinoff games don't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you do the math on that. It was like 3.2 million mm-hmm. per game, basically. And I don't know if they're throwing Pokemon Go on those numbers. They can't be throwing Pokemon Go on. The Pokemon Go has over 300 million downloads. <laughs> no way heck Pokemon Go is included in those numbers. Yeah, no. Probably none of their mobile games. Yeah, um, probably not. But yeah, it's uh, it's a very interesting thing with this Nintendo Red Rock because I feel like there's a lot of things we can pretty much say, yeah, that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I can definitely see Pokemon not I mean, Wolfenstein 2 is going to be there. Yeah. First time we'll probably see like legit Switch footage of it. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, I can almost guarantee you Pokemon. Nothing Pokemon is going to be there, but I mean, it's I it's it's a nice idea. It has twenty. I, I mean, it's an announced game. I, I just I still. I don't mean, the game I want to see. It, it, I don't. They're not going to. I don't know. They guess they could do it. What the hell is Retro Studios working on? Yeah, I don't know. Seriously, how long has it been since Tropical Freeze? Three, four years. Yeah. What the heck I are they know. doing? Did everyone just quit and they're just rebuilding the studio? I, Impossible. <sighs> Actually, that would be kind. They're, of, they're that like, would be kind of cool, Donkey Kong. Well, I love Donkey Kong. Like that's the thing, I love Donkey Kong. I don't know that next year is the year to do it when you're already releasing a two D side scrolling platformer, um, in Kirby, and then another one in Yoshi. So you, you got to space that out. That might be a holiday game. What? Like a, a Donkey Kong, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it just, those games don't sell that well. The only 2D games that 2D side scrolling games Nintendo has that sells phenomenal is Mario. Well, yeah. Everything else just eh, it's like Metroid. Mm. Now that's not that's fine because they don't cost a lot of money to make. Right. Um and that's the thing, like Tropical Freeze to me is like one of the best, if not the best, side scrolling platform games I've ever played. But um I know a lot of people are disappointed because they wanted another Metroid instead. Uh, from that studio because they had that studio reportedly had a choice between making another Metroid Prime or making Donkey Kong. They chose Donkey Kong, and I'm just like, well, you can't get mad at them for that. They're, they're making what they want to make instead of what Nintendo's saying, yeah, make another Metroid, right? Right, um, but 
New Metro Prime's being made by a whole new studio, rumored to be Bandai. We don't know for sure if it's Bandai Namco. Um, they, we know the Bandai Namco helped with Smash Bros. last time, so Nintendo does have a partnership with them, kind of. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure if there is a new Smash game, they're probably the studio making it, especially if Sakurai doesn't make it anymore. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities. I just... I am not expecting to be surprised. Mm. The only way I'll be surprised is if they actually have game footage. If they, if they have, if they, if they have game footage of Fire Emblem, Metroid, and Pokemon, that's going to shock me. Games are all announced, so they could, but I don't expect it. Right. And on top of that, the game footage blows my mind. Like if the Pokemon footage is just like Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon in HD, I'm just going to be like, are you? Yeah. It's, no, yeah, I'm done. You. I'm already so, done. You, you, I mean. Come on. I told you guys I wanted to try to get back into Pokemon, and that's what you're giving me. Don't get me wrong. It looks great, but it's like, come on. Come on. You might as well just put it on mobile phones at that point. Make it yeah. HD. Yeah, they right? can run HD Pokemon games. Come on. Um, and I don't think, I honestly don't think that's what they're going to do. In fact, the most recent report was that the Pokemon uh, game, uh, after they saw the success of Breath of the Wild and the, re- the reaction before Odyssey came out, um, to just how big and wide and like how blowing up the game. Like, it's weird because Odyssey didn't really change much. They kind of built off of a, a formula they just haven't used in a long time. Whereas Zelda really just did stuff that they've never done. Mm-hmm. Um, after this, you mean like take over E3? Yeah, they saw like the hype. They saw the excitement. Uh, it sounded like the Pokemon team at that point realized, okay. Cause like they, they were uh, supposedly afraid to break away from what they know, which you understand. I mean, oh, you, yeah. have, you have 300 million units. I mean, why would you... What, why, Right, why, exactly. Why fix was and isn't again, broke. Yeah. But uh, apparently after seeing what Zelda did, because again, you could argue why fix was not broke with Zelda. Um, they're like, okay. We, we, we Like their ambitions for the game became like Breath of the Wild-esque. Yeah. And the, my problem when I hear that, it's not really a problem. I hear that and I hear that they kind of realized that last year mm-hmm. or this year. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. There's no way heck we're seeing this game then. Right. Breath of the Wild took how long and how many delays? Right. Like, if you're going to go... I'm not saying they're going open world, but I'm just saying if they're going to be that ambitious and being like, look, we really are just going to change everything up. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going next... Like, this is this is the next generation of actual... Like, like forget the you know, gen, gen 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. But I mean, like, the next... Like, a true generational leap. Right. Um, which is what I think a lot of people want. Then, okay. I mean, I'll wait 2020, 2021, however long it takes. Mm-hmm. Um, delay it if you need to. I don't care. I mean, they're not going to wait forever for a new Pokemon game to come out, but uh, maybe they will because maybe they're making so much money at Pokemon Go and you know, right. other and other apps that they don't I care. mean, maybe even if it's not even a concept, maybe it's actually just even the name. <sighs> Hype. Yeah. I mean, think about, and before everyone's like, oh yeah, just the name. I'm like, well, do you remember how excited people got just seeing the Metroid Prime 4 logo? Yeah. Or... The when we were at E three, how many people like freaked the heck out when plus, like Breath of the Wild uh, came up, and Pokemon, yeah, everyone was calling it Breath of the Wind at the time. Like, yeah, did you guys not read? Yeah, <laughs> got so excited that you yeah. just skipped the last word. You saw a W and just assumed. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's I I'm excited. Uh, it's a Nintendo Direct. It's a, one of their major Nintendo Directs. I'll always be excited. Sounds like it's coming. Bet on sometime in January. Uh, for now, I think the next thing to look forward to is the Game Awards. Um, but we will probably do something on that next week because 5J and I talked about it last week. But uh, we'll probably do some like bets or something. When we'll is the it. actual Game Awards? December 7th. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you just said that already. Yeah. yeah. So it should be, I think it's either, I think it's Friday. E- I think the first is a Friday next week. So 7th. Yes. Yeah. Thursday or Friday. Either way, the podcast that we will record next week will come up before it. So we'll do like a betting special. Um, we'll see if we, anyone else wants to get in on it. Maybe we'll make like losers eat hot peppers while reciting poems, like we talked about before, it, um, or something. Say, hot something. peppers is this? Is this an actual punishment? Something. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll go higher up than a ghost pepper. We'll make it a real punishment. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll see. I don't know. I actually don't know what the punishment's going to be yet. Eric and I'll probably talk about it behind the scenes to figure it out. But yeah, we'll do a betting special. We'll basically pick winners for each each of the thirty awards and. And it's funny because if someone would be like, uh, who's good at esports here? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just one out of four chance. Good luck. Yeah. Or one out of five or six. I don't even know. <laughs> um, anyways, let's move on to the last topic. We talked about it briefly already. Animal Crossing 
is on mobile now. Mm-hmm. Um, it released in Australia about a month ago, and I actually got the SDK and had it this entire month and just forgot about it and never played it until this <laughs> Nice. Um, it released basically without any announcement it was coming out. Yeah, I, um, I was Really say, I weird. It's really... just, here it is. It's like, okay. I mean, I guess. That's how mobile games work, I guess. I don't remember. Yeah, right. I don't remember any, any announcements in my lifetime being like, hey, this comes out this day, and it's a mobile game. Mm-hmm. So I guess it kind of falls in line with mobile games. If you're going to Nintendo... They did a whole direct for it, so you figure they make a bigger deal out of the release yeah. date. But, um, yeah. So Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, uh, we both got to play a little bit of it. We're um, I'm admitting to you guys right now. We're not like super super far into it. Um, I think we have like yeah. the whole maps unlocked now. Yeah. So we basically opened it up now, where we can kind of start doing whatever we want. Um, and. Before we get into like our thoughts on the game, just some interesting stats about this game, like the first like day that it's been out. Um, it's the most downloaded game in the United States, Japan, Canada, France, Germany, Spain, Austria, and Luxembourg. Uh, and it's like top 10 basically everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, really popular. Not like Pokemon Go levels of first day downloads, but right. like it's very, very, very it's performing very well. Um What's interesting is it's only right now a top 10 grossing app in Japan. Mm-hmm. It debuted at number nine, but again, it hasn't been out very long. You give it a month. Once people get past the tutorial and really right. get into it, you can see them yep. uh, buying some stuff in it. Or, or maybe they don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, apparently in Japan they did. <laughs> they do. Well, Japan goes nuts for their oh, phone. That's games. very true. So um, they Crossing. ain't, ain't going to wait. They ain't got patience. Yeah. I mean, they love Animal Crossing, but they, I mean, if you would have offered microtransactions in Animal Crossing New Leaf, it would have been the number one grossing game in 3DS history in yeah. Japan. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, the, Nintendo's goal with this game is not just to increase the popularity of Animal Crossing. It's microtransactions. They want to make money. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's cool. Because, what's interesting is when you download it, it does say free to start. Yes, it does. I, th- I thought that was interesting because... Most games still label themselves as free to play when they have microtransactions. Mm-hmm. Nintendo's just like, look, it's free to start. And what I oh. thought, what I think is interesting about that free to start is, at least so far, I know early, I have been playing the game. I haven't ran into anything that's like you have to spend money to continue. Right. Yeah. And but that's the that's the part that worries me is it's again it says free to start. Does that mean that eventually you do get to a point where you have to spend money? Well, to... because well, basically what you spend money on in this game is for the leaf tickets. Mm-hmm. Um, you buy leaf tickets and those allow you to speed up things. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make the... the you can buy I mean, They're not town stuff. folk, I guess campsite folk. Um, you can re-enable them to ask you to do more tasks for them so you can earn more stuff. Um, more supplies which are used to craft gear and craft clothes and, and furniture and set up your campsite. Um, customize your camper, which is really cool. Uh, you can use them to do certain events. Um, there's like this one part of the map that it costs 20 tickets to even go to it, uh, or Ooh. you can have five friends go with you. Apparently, I don't have five friends yet because it, well, it just said I had no friends. I don't know. I have to go. Th- I haven't gone through all the little settings. I'm sure there's a way like I can like friend up with you, right? And, and right. Other people yeah. like on my switch or whatever. Right. I just haven't gone through those settings yet to set up my friends. But um, obviously, I'm early, so I go through a lot of tutorial and all the things are just handed to you. Uh, yeah. But yeah. what are your thoughts so far? Because you played Animal Crossing way back, yeah, in the day. way back in the day, so GameCube days. Yes. Give you guys. Yes. Yes. Idea. Um. Hmm. So far, it's not too bad. It's 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 an Animal Crossing game. It it really is. Yeah. It, well, it, it, that was my first like thought. Playing, I'm just like, okay, yeah, this tutorial. But I'm like, this is what Animal Crossing feels like. like. Yep. Like this is, it doesn't feel like something that's watered down necessarily. Right. I mean, it right. clearly is. The world is smaller. Well, yeah, obviously, but it has it's to going be. to be. Yeah. But you know, instead of being a mayor of a city, you are the person who now runs a yep. campground. Yep, Basically. you're a camp manager. Camp manager, yeah. Yes. Um, as Isabel so kindly <laughs> reminds you at every turn. Right, right. Oh, how are you doing managing your camp? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm know. just building up my own camp, so I don't really yeah, care I don't about anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I love how everybody has an opinion on what your campsite should look like. Oh, I know. Wait a minute. 
Yeah. This is m- yeah. my campsite. Oh, here's my dr- Jay. Here's my yeah. dream of what you're. Ca- no, I don't want a merry-go-round yeah, right? in my yeah. campsite. Yeah, Get that you. out no. of here. Oh, do you it. like my vision? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's no option to say no. Come on. Yeah, right, right. I know but, it's Animal Crossing. Gotta stay positive. But. My the thing with that too is, is you if you go and watch that whole entire vision that he has, where's your tent? You have no place to sleep besides a hammock, I guess, but that's out in the middle of everything. Yep. Yep. I, There's no tent. There's no tent. The I mean, I guess you sleep in, sleep the tent your, maybe you upgraded your camper at that point. You or, do, or, do you sl- or do you sleep in the merry around? Because that's where your tent was. <laughs> there is. I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it's an Animal Crossing game. It feels like an Animal Crossing game. It, it controls just fine. Um, it, it, well, ooh, what do you like I actually issue? have a problem with the controls. What happened? The pathing. I have a problem with the pathing. What happened? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I had no problem. I have a problem with, like, let's say I, it says you can click on somewhere to go on the screen. That's where it goes on the screen, right? Yeah. Well, oh. if there's something in between you and that, it's not smart enough to go around the damn thing. Well, that's just an AI issue, yeah. Right. But I'm saying that's a problem. Yeah. Well, you know why? You know why? It's funny. Um, You bring that up. That's not how I'm controlling my guy. I'm just. Well, right. No, 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 no. I know. But and then I don't have any issue. Well, right. But if, yeah, for it, those, it like, if you tap you. on, like, if you tap yeah. on a person to go talk to him or a yeah. character to go talk yeah. to him and you run into something, you just stop. Yeah. yeah. It, it, hello. It's it, collision. <laughs> move. Go. It, hello. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because that that's the one thing I did like about tapping on the characters is my guy would just automatically walk over to him. Uh, but again, it does tell you early on that you could just tap anywhere and your character will just walk to it. Yep. Um, I just that's not how I'm really controlling my character, I guess. No, but um, it, but it, it it's not something like you said. It's it's the it, way they convey it is yeah. you tap and it goes. Yeah. Which is not how it is. Yeah, it just feels like you shouldn't be stopped by obstacles if you can get around them. Right. Easily. Yeah. 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 Like it's a tree. Walk around the damn tree. Yeah. Exactly. The pathing of it should be smart um, enough to. But get yeah. To the spot any complaint tap. besides that? No. No. Okay. I mean, that's that's my major complaint. Actually, that's my major complaint to the game so far. Yeah. Because like everything else, it's like uh, like I'm skipping through a lot of the like when I was I was going through the tutorial because I was I was reading the tutorial really close and he kept saying tap to do this tap to I'm like well duh it's a phone it's a phone what else am I gonna do. You tap to do everything unless you're telling me to shake my phone with the gyro, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever stuff. Or but, throw it across the room. But I'm Wait. like, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Tap, 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 tap. Catch a fish. Tap to tap to do it. When it says the exclamation point comes up, tap to catch it. I got it. This it, isn't well, that hard. And I love how the exclamation point says tap. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Thank you. I mean, I get no, it. No, yeah, it has yeah, to be sure. this way. There's going to be kids, kids that are going to yep. play it. Um. Well, one thing I do like uh, that I will say about this is the microtransactions aren't really in your face. Uh, so far, so far, there, there, there's exceptions. Um, in the top left corner, I did notice a pop out um, that said like limited seven, time offer. Limited time yeah. offer. That's obviously a paid thing. It is, but it's um, not. But it's not obtrusive. It yeah. doesn't block any. It of your doesn't take up your whole me. screen. Like we play Task Force Baseball. Yeah. Limited time offer, whole screen. You can't yep. ignore it. Yep. Um, you have to literally close out of it. Where yep. here you could just not even pay, not even notice this happening. No, no, for sure. Actually, tap sports baseball. I noticed since the new update, like the whole get rid of advertisement things is back. I I already spent money on this game and and done that the ad should be gone. But yeah, that's that's again whole other sidetrack. Well, they probably don't mean their own ads. No, no. I mean, are, are but, you are you getting like the in between game ads again? No, but yeah, that's probably what they mean. You're still gonna get their ads. They're not gonna yeah, stop well, advertising no, I to know you. That. You yeah. bought something. They want you to buy yeah. more. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. They have some interesting deals now. You can get yeah. like these mega awesome players for twenty bucks. I'm like, I, 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 I wish you would have offered. I bought would've, one. I wish you would have offered me that like three yeah. months ago. Yeah. That would have been awesome. I bought one. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> Uh, well, compared to yeah. eighty bucks, it used to be. But to it, well, no, I know. But it, it it's not. That's so you're supporting microtransactions. Indeed. Here's, here's reluctantly. Well, okay. So this brings up a point um, because this game does have microtransactions. Yes. Uh, so do like basically Which every actually, mobile phone game in the world basically has microtransactions. Right. right. Which again, it, it understandable. It's the way the companies make money. Um, it, it's, I don't have an issue with it in games like Tap Swords Baseball or. This where it is because of, 
Well, there is one issue in Task Force Baseball, which might be affected by a lawsuit right now. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because you know how it has the random, random, like you get a draft pick and it's randomized? Y- yeah, it's not that, that's a ga- That's a gambling system. Oh. And right now there's a lawsuit happening because of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and their loot boxes. Um, and if that lawsuit keeps teetering, it could affect mobile games, which means things like the randomized you're spending money to have rent to get by gold yeah. to buy draft picks that are randomized. Yeah. It can go bye bye. Hmm. Interesting. Like the, the transaction to spend 20 bucks to buy a player. No, that that'll be fine. Right. It's not random. Right. I mean, the offer is random, but whatever, you know what you get when you spend your money. Right. Versus spend it. Basically they're saying it promotes gambling. Mm-hmm. That's what they're saying. I don't know how many kids are playing Task Force Baseball, yeah, but right, right, right. it could just be where it just becomes an M-rated game or something, and they allow it to continue. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's microtransactions. I always say in a f- free game, I, they don't bother me. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, it bothers me." All these, but I'm like, you're getting the game for free. They didn't. It, it, do you just expect everything to be free because it's a phone game? Right. They, it costs money to make these games. Right. And a game and, that's this high quality that right. feels like an Animal Crossing game. Right. No, for Nintendo sure. Nintendo invested a decent oh, sure. penny into this. For one. sure. And being, the you know, both of us being devs, nothing big, yeah, of course. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. um, I understand why they do it. But as a consumer, it's as long as it's not completely intruding on your gameplay. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I understand having almost paywall-like microtransactions. I get it. To a point. Yeah. But because that's even what it's like in Task Force Baseball, right? That's the game we both play a lot. Um, and I haven't spent money in it in a long time. Not since I switched from Apple to, to Android have I spent any money on it. Yeah. But I, I haven't felt the need to at this point because the money I spent in the past has gotten me to a point where I just make so much gold now. I make so much cash right, now. Right. I have no reason to spend money anymore. Um, and what sucked is, you know, I did spend, I've, I've probably spent over a hundred bucks on the game to get where I am. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, even, want I don't even want to even know. Yeah. Well, I don't even want and, to But know. that's how they get you. No, I know. Um, right. And, but then I look at it as, but it's a game, you know, that I'm, that I enjoy playing and I play a lot. Right. And I played it, you know, for, if I spent a hundred bucks total, I don't really think that's a big deal to me with how much I played it. Right. Um, but it was free to play and I chose to spend money. Right. Um, versus like, like, Sixty dollar games that you pay sixty bucks up front, and then you're throwing microtransactions, and that kind of bothers me a little bit. You mean like NBA Two K eighteen? Yeah. Well, the thing is, the way I play the game, I don't have to worry about it. Right. But, but like, if I was really into building a team, um, like using like a my my team yeah, creator, but, and then using the my career, like yeah, yeah. that's all microtransactions. And the thing is, some people are like, well, maybe because of the microtransactions, that's why you don't do it. I'm like, no, I've just never really been interested in, right. in that. Right. Like when they added yeah. the card packs to Madden and the ultimate teams in FIFA, yeah. it's like, I mean, I get the appeal, but like if I want to do that, I'll just go buy card packs and collect cards that are yeah. worth money. Yeah. Instead of like building a team that, yeah, you're going to beat me online all the time because you randomly got better players than me. That just doesn't seem exciting to me. Yeah. I mean, I get the appeal. Mm-hmm. That's why I like the, uh, the one mode that they added in Madden, uh, I think it was new last year, where they added the uh, the draft mode, where you go through like twelve rounds of drafting and you get to pick between like five. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That yep, was yep. really cool. Yes. I know that it turned into like an ultimate team thing after that, but at least you could build the core of your team right through a drafting system, and I love right. that. That was fun. Right. Um, but it it just brings up a point here, like with Animal Crossing, it has microtransactions. I so far don't feel they're that intrusive. Right. Um, they're not doing full. Full screen. Full screen. Um, it only really ever pops up, one, if you're out of leaf tickets, mm-hmm. and you try to use leaf tickets. Well, uh, it'll, obvious, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a little button that says buy leaf tickets. Right. Um, uh, obviously. Obviously. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the, but that's like it. Like It's not like popping up like, oh, you're out of apples, buy apples. No, yeah. you can't buy apples. Right. At least, well, I mean, maybe you can buy it from a vendor in the game, but you, right. can't, you, you can't buy it with money. Um, mm-hmm. So... And, here, and here's one, one reason why it also doesn't bother me as much in this game is it's Animal Crossing. Right. When it's like, oh, pay you could pay, you know, three or ten leaf tickets or whatever it was to uh, have this person give you three more tasks or you can wait a half hour. I'm like, that's nothing in Animal Crossing. A half hour in Animal Crossing? Yeah. That's nothing. That might, I used I mean, to wait days for certain events to right, happen. Right, right. And that might happen where it might end up getting longer the longer, sure. deeper you get into the game. It might, but, but it's just one of those... It's one of those. It's Animal Crossing. It is. It's always been a game of patience. Right. 
Uh, you basically you log in, you do everything you can, you wait a few hours, and you do it all over again. Yeah. You know, um, it's got relationship building in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how you, uh, at least so far, that's how I've been able to unlock things. Yep. Higher relationship gets with certain characters, the more items are unlocked. They obviously don't know anything about special event items yet, because uh, there hasn't been a special event yet besides this is launch. Yeah. Um, so, be interesting to see. Like, I, I would love if they started adding, like, medieval special event, because I want, I want a castle. Well, I, I know I have a, a sporting camping area. castle. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I want a camping castle. Okay. If you can have a merry-go-round, I can have there, a castle. There is that. Okay. I, well, I, merry-go-round's yep. my tent. I can have a castle. I, yep. That, 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 yep. You're, <laughs> it, it's Animal Crossing. Point, it doesn't have point, to make sense. Point. <laughs> doesn't have to make sense. Um, what surprised me is, uh, and I knew I knew some of this, but I just kind of forgot, like, being able to customize your camper, you can make it bigger. You can customize some inside stuff on it, because um, a lot of the a lot of the advertising and everything focuses around your campsite, your campsite, your campsite. Mm-hmm. But like, it's not just that. It, it, it's really cool how like you have kind of like two separate places you can kind of customize up. Um, and it's probably cool because I think when you go visit other people's campsites, you go in your camper to their campsite, um, so then they can enter your camper and check out some stuff. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, what am I gonna put in there? And it's funny, I hate saying this, this is going to make this podcast not be advertiser friendly. First thing I thought when I saw the van was, that's a rape van. Yeah. Doesn't look like a camper to me. It looks like a rape van down by the river. Yeah. That that scares me. And then you go inside and you're like, oh, this is kind of nice in here. But I'm like, from the outside, could could, it kind of have a better design? Like campers have windows on the sides and stuff. Why is there no windows on the side? Yeah. That's what rape vans look like. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, campers have windows. There's light that comes in, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a, a, something you can end up changing later. But um, let's just go, some, let's let's just, let's just go with creeper van. The creeper van. Creeper van's a little bit better yeah, word for it. Yeah. It's just. I don't know. And the thing is, I know it's stereotyping, but I'm sorry. I've seen too many movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's just the vans I use. I'm just waiting for free candy to burn it on the side of the ding thing. Oh. oh, it's funny, too. When I went to the shop area, because there's a shop area where you can, like, interact with different merchants. Oh, no, no, no. When I first got into my campsite, they made me build that sofa. Yeah. I'm like, that looks like an ice cream truck. Oh, wait, no. That's just, like, a place to build furniture? <laughs> what? You look like you're selling candy. Give me some candy. Yeah. Nope. No. No candy. Not yet, anyways. No soup for you. Um, got to eat some fruit with some people, did some fishing. Yep. Did some butterfly catching. Yep. And other bug catching. There's all the bugs you can catch. Um, yeah, mostly I I gotta say, I'm I'm the microtransactions don't bother me. But again, we just admit openly admit we're people that participate in microtransactions if it's a game we like. Right. Um so it's definitely a game I'm gonna continue to play, at least for you know, probably the next few weeks. Yeah. Um and we'll see, because it's just cause I this is why I don't play Animal Crossing games because I can't stop. They're very addicting. Uh, because the whole point of Animal Crossing, I mean, you could argue there's multiple points too, but to me, the fun of it was always decking out your place. So when friends come visit, they just like, well, how the heck did you get that? And yeah. I'm just like, dude, I got a full football te- team here and a yeah. field and yeah. goalposts and a roller coaster and yeah, yeah, yeah this is balling. Yeah. This is what I want in real life <laughs> in yeah. my backyard. It's not going right, to happen. Right. No. Um, and, and that's just always been like the fun to me. And the fact that it, it's very pick up and play um, because I feel like the, t- the time it would take me now that we're done with the tutorial to go to each area and collect like all the bugs and all the fish and all the, all the items and do all the little quests for all the characters. I could probably do all of that within 15 minutes, 20 minutes at most. Yeah. Probably. Um, and then, yeah, you can go build stuff. I'm like, but I'm gonna wait. I don't want to build anything until I unlock the stuff I want to make, right. so I don't waste my supplies. Right. Um. But yeah, it's <sighs> thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> you finally released a mobile game I can't put down. Yeah. Um. You know, I I play Pokemon Go. I know that's not Nintendo, but it's Niantic. But I play Pokemon Go. Had fun. Haven't played it in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um. Play Pokemon Duel. Didn't like that. So much just because the UI, I like yes. the I like the concept yeah. of it. The gameplay yep. is great, but like the UI just well, uh, until it uh, decides it wants to freak out and freeze. And well, that's a, that's again, yeah. that's not the wrong with the gameplay. That's the app just not being good. Right. Um. Then there is uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that for a little while, and then it just got kind of bored. 
Um, I don't know. It just didn't feel like a, a, close enough to a real Fire Emblem game, personally. I know some, some of you guys love it, and that's fine. It, to um, me, it was a lot of, okay, it's very, very repetitive, at least for me, it was. Yeah. It was a lot of, okay, here, spend feathers, get poles, do characters. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, yeah. and then go fight It's battles. basically built around collecting yeah. your favorite characters. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a story, and there's like a thing that you can play through, but... Uh, it's very much built around collecting characters, spending money to collect more characters. Right. Uh, and that's fine. Some of you guys are into that. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, cause it makes it's Nintendo's highest grossing mobile game currently. Uh, maybe Animal Crossing will surpass it now, but before Animal Crossing came out, it was. Uh, Super Mario Run. Love Super Mario Run. It's amazing. Bought yeah. it. Spent the 10 bucks on it. Bought yeah. the full game. Had a blast. But like, once you're done, you're done. Um, yeah. It's like it's like it's like any other Mario game. You yeah, know, you're, you're done. You're, you're done. Yeah, I mean you can go you're back. Done, and re- son. You can go back and replay it. You know you can try to beat times. They they add like ghost mode in and try to like compete yeah. on, on yep. leaderboards for time. Yep. Like that's all fine. I think that's cool. And there's people that care about that. I just don't. Mm-hmm. I just don't care. Right. Um. So, but it's fun. Like Super Mario Run was surprisingly probably one of the best runners, like nonstop runners I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Um. It, it, it felt I don't know how they pulled it off but it felt like a dang Mario game and I'm like this yeah. is awesome yeah Um, and now they did it again with Animal Crossing this yeah. feels like an Animal Crossing game it feels like what it says a pocket camp a pocket version of Animal a small slice of what everything Animal Crossing is in your pocket mm-hmm. that probably is going to lead to a full game on Switch that's what I feel oh, like oh yeah for sure that's for one sure. reason I know I'm going to keep playing too because I'm the if I if I if I put like three hundred hours in this little mobile game like I have with Task Force Baseball, and the Switch one comes out and there's no connectivity, I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah. Because literally, I feel like I'm I'm playing it now because I w- want to import some stuff to Switch. Mm-hmm. And if I can't, I'm gonna explode over here. Come on, Nintendo, you have the online networks to do it. Just yeah, do it. Is it that hard? It might be. Oh, it might it be. is Nintendo. Yeah. You never know. Sometimes some of the easiest stuff is hard. Like voice chat? Yeah. So here's what's cool about the voice chat thing. Uh, it's not really cool, but leave it to a hardware manufacturer to try to fix some of the problems. Because uh, you know one of the most annoying things to me is the dongle. Mm-hmm. Um, so Steel Series, I'm trying, I'm, I got in contact with them, trying to get them to send me a test product. Uh, they, they have this new headset they're releasing, the Arctic 3 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's literally targeted to Switch. You can use it for anything. But it's targeted to be, uh, it's got one cord you run to your Switch for the game audio. Yep. And then it uses Bluetooth to connect to your phone for voice chat. Okay. So it's basically Bluetooth, voice chat, and game audio in the same headset. Okay. Now you can use other things to advertise, like, oh, you can use it on your you know, playing 360 and play music on your phone or something like, yeah, obviously it connects to your phone. You can do anything you want. Right. Um, but the, basically the primary reason it exists is there is this issue with switch and no one solved it yet. And this doesn't really solve it, but it makes it a little more convenient. So it's just one cord being ran mm-hmm. and you have voice chat and game audio, uh, which was obviously one of my big complaints. Uh, it's hundred thirty dollars, so it's not like Ooh. a cheap, but it's. It, I mean, uh, the, it's, the, it's a headset, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a high quality headset from a high quality vendor, so you, you generally know. Like, I know when I get the product, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a positive outlook at it, unless it has issues connecting to Bluetooth. Right. Um, if it's the audio, if the audio yeah. is cracking for some reason, the microphone quality is bad. But it's Steel Series. They usually don't make bad quality stuff. Now, granted, I've only ever used the Steel Series mouse. Yeah. I've never used their audio stuff, so. Um, but for 130 bucks, I'm expecting really good quality. So we'll see. And if that works out, obviously, you know, then I can do a a product review like I did for the RAV power power banks and the wall mount and all that stuff. Um, because I don't like suggesting products to you guys if I don't feel like they're worth it. And this doesn't fix everything, but Nintendo is not going to stop using the app for voice chat. At least we have no indication they're going to stop. So make the best of the situation you can. Um, and, and here's the thing. You're like, well, just use Discord. This works with Discord on your phone. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so this could do it. So if you'd rather not use the online app and use Discord, this does that too. So, um, yeah, it, it's definitely something that uh, I'm not going to throw a link down to the description for it yet because, I, again, I don't want to suggest anyone buys it until I can verify that it's worth it. But it sounds like a really neat concept. 
Uh, it's probably not the first concept like this. Well, it might be. The first concept that lets you have two simultaneous connections, yeah. a, a wired and a Bluetooth. I don't yeah. actually, I can't think of any other headset that's done that. There's headsets that allow multiple Bluetooth, but you usually have to hit a switch mm-hmm. to switch between them. You can't right. combine it all into one. And here we right. have a Bluetooth and a wired. Kind mm-hmm. of interesting. Yeah. It's a really cool design. I'm, I'm glad that the product exists. There'll probably be more of them in the yeah. future if this one does well. But uh, yeah, just just wanted to mention that. All right, I think that's going to do it for this podcast. As I said it was going to be a short one. It was a little over an hour. Yeah. Sweet. Nice and short this week. <laughs> I hope you guys all had a, if you're in the United States, had a good holiday weekend. And if you went shopping for the Black Fridays and the Cyber Mondays and all that great stuff, I think this podcast should it's supposed to release on Cyber Monday. Um, so I hope you guys, you know, found some good gaming deals out there you know, or whatever, got your presents for anyone that you need for the holidays. Um, I haven't <laughs> because I had to pay bills, <laughs> bills before buying presents, but oh, yep. that's okay. I have, I have YouTube money. Yes. YouTube money from Nintendo prime coming that I'm buying presents with. Thank you guys so much for your support. Cause you guys are why I'm able to do that. So mm-hmm. awesome. All right, well, uh, I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. You can follow me on Twitter at Nate Jance. This is Eric Moore. Yeah, that did. Don't worry about following me because you can't. Follow him at Ninty Prime. He doesn't actually use Twitter, but we'll <laughs> pretend that that's his Twitter. Right. That's the official Nintendo Prime Twitter. I run both. It is what it is. Um, it, and we haven't mentioned it yet this podcast, but you can check us out at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Uh, the big thing is, is even when... The video version was delayed. Like last week's podcast, the video version got delayed till Wednesday. The audio version was still out on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So technically those people ended up with four days early access instead of one, just for five bucks a month, and that happens every single week. So even if the video version is delayed, you don't have to wait for the podcast if you don't want. Uh, I, I know some people said, oh, it's even when you release on Monday, sometimes you're a couple days behind. Hey, if you become a Patreon backer, yeah. you get the podcast like pretty much as fast as we can possibly edit it, um, which is awesome. So uh, that's one way to get the podcast early. You can be on a podcast for 20 bucks. What's actually interesting about the $20 tier, um, we have 10 slots. Seven of them are taken. None of them could make it for November. Wow. <laughs> and they're still supporting us anyways. That's but that's awesome. the thing. Yeah, I, right, I do, right, right. All, all, what I do note in there that all I guarantee is that I invite you to a podcast. Mm-hmm. They've all been invited if they can't come. It is what it is, you know, and like it's very transparent. Right. Um, I, I don't like to like make people feel like they're not getting their money's worth, but it, it is what sometimes it just doesn't work out. Schedules. Right, right. right. Um, they all know, you know, it says they're very clearly in there that we record on Thursdays generally at 9 p.m. Right. Um, well, we will adjust if we need to, but people are just like, it's busy, it's holiday time. Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm assuming one of our early December episodes will be get someone, because I think we have one more episode that's for November. Next yes. Week, next week's episode. Yes. Theoretically, yes. Yes. Yeah. It because is the last it, day of November. Well, yeah. Because, yeah. Wait. This It'll, is the yeah. last one. For, this is the last podcast for that's going to release in November. Release in November. Yeah. Yes. Well, because but it was so. Yeah. Record, so anyway, I guess this is the last. The last November. Yeah. Podcast. We record on the final day of November, but right. it's the first December podcast. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to get some of them in hope maybe on next week's podcast or the one after, uh, the hard thing is obviously we had two new $20 backers join this month. They can't be invited until the money clears. So they can't get invited for the next week one, but the people who, uh, have been backing and couldn't make it, maybe I can get them on next week. We'll yep. see. Yep. We'll see. It's, it's that time of the year. It's busy, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, oh yeah. We have links to like merch like this down below. I don't know if it's on sale anymore. It was on sale all this past weekend. No. I don't know if it is anymore. It's Cyber Monday. Maybe it's on sale again. Yeah. I, I, you feel like I should be able to tell you that, but it, like it's a third-party merch store. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but I can tell you this. If it is on sale, it's like the exact same sale every time, so it never gets any cheaper. So just dive in. Don't like, oh, I'm going to wait till the Nintendo Prime merchandise is 50% off. It's, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, not unless we go with a new a new merchandise provider and we don't have any other options on the table. So it's not true. I have one other option on the table, but I don't like the way the store is set up. So um, it, it comes from our our partner, BBTV. Like, oh, you got, you got access thing. We get really good commission from it too. Way better than we do from this site. But 
man, I tried to set up just a t-shirt and like you go to the site on mobile and like everything's just like cut off. And I'm like, okay, I can't send my fans to a site they can't use. You're right. So fix your stuff. I, I'm not going to throw them under the bus because they're our partners, but yes, um, they know, they know. I, I've told them several times, you just need to get that fixed up and maybe we'll start using that. And what I like about them is like our current merch store, we have notebooks, shirts, sweatshirts, onesies, tote bags, pillows, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff. Um, mugs, which are yeah, somewhere. somewhere around here. Um, yeah, actually, there's only one down here. The other one's upstairs. Right yeah. Uh, then uh, this new, this other merch store does some other cool things. Like you can get rugs. I don't know why you want a Nintendo hey, Prime rug, not. but you know what? Uh, and I heard someone say that our our design, like this design here, is too in your face. Huh? I mean, I am in your face. Have you have you watched one of my <laughs> videos? I'm very <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I hear you. Uh, there's a couple things I'm going to be uh, doing. Um, if I don't get it in, in a newer merch store, if I put it in the one I'm currently using, there's going to be some more designs going up. Uh, there's going to be one that's just the just the old OG original bomb logo, no fancy explosion stuff around it. Um, then there's going to be one that's just the Nintendo Prime text. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be side by side or if it's going to be top and bottom like this. I haven't decided yet. It's kind of when I go to design it, we'll see what happens. Um, and... <laughs> On top of that, when we launch arguing arguing with myself, the logo for that's going to also be on a t-shirt and stuff design. Um, now, some people said they wanted something more subtle, like uh, like the bomb logo on like a pocket over here. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the people that we go through right now don't have that option. But I think if my partner BBTV gets their stuff together, um, what we can use through them actually has an option for that. Okay. Um, so for someone who wants something more subtle like that. Um, I understand because like maybe you want to show some love, but you don't want it to be like just in your face. I get it, especially when you're like working in a professional environment. You know, maybe you're you're you work in an office. You just don't. You can wear t-shirts there, but you just don't want like in your face t-shirts. Right. I get it. Um. So we'll see what we can do about that. I no no guarantees. It's kind of limited by the providers we have. Mm-hmm. Um. And these are providers I worked with back at Zelda Informer. Um. But whatever. No one bought Zelda Informer merchandise either. So. <laughs> well, fun. So we did sell one Nintendo Prime item at the time of recording this. Someone bought one of the baseball T-shirts. Nice. And they said they wear it a lot, and I'm like, awesome. Nice. I will say something. The T-shirts seem to last a lot longer than any other any of the other. Um, like if you buy like a sweatshirt product, it doesn't seem to last as well as long in the wash as the T-shirt does. Mm-hmm. All right, it could be the material. It could just be my water because my water sucks here. <laughs> So yeah. I've really, I've really acidic water. It's not good for. I shouldn't even. I should be hand washing with my drinking water, probably. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I didn't pay for that one sweatshirt that I have, so I guess I can't be too mad. But it's like one of those. Do I keep telling people to buy something that might not last? But the t-shirts last. I've washed them several times, and they still look brand new. So, and obviously, I really like this notebook. This is my favorite notebook. They have the two styles of notebooks. The one's got blank paper and it's it's hardcover. And the soft one, I love this. This is like something you could use like a planner. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got got the lines in. Like even today, you know, we, we had I have an issue with the printer. I don't know why I always have issues with the printer when it's podcast time. But like there's the podcast topics. Yeah. It's convenient. It's yeah. nice to have. My little doodle. All right, folks, that's gonna do it. <laughs> We just extended this later. by yeah. We we just extended this by about ten twenty Catch minutes. you in messing up my audio in the next one. <laughs> See you later.